Okay, wonderful. We see you very well, so uh, welcome to the session. We've got a nice audience this morning. We're excited to uh, hear what you have. So, um, so Dr. Rao, Chandra Sharma, so welcome. Please introduce uh, the case and your team, and then we can get moving. Good morning from Jaipur, and thank you, India Life, for having us in this session. Uh, let's go to the case presentation. So before, before we start this case, let me introduce my team. That's me. My name is Ravinder. He is Dr. Kailash, Dr. Govind, and Dr. Vikram. He's an intervention structural fellow. He's going to spend one year with us uh, learning all structural cases. And here's Dr. Prashant Vashne. He's a cardiac anesthetist, and he's part of all our tower and mitra clip, specializes in DE for mitra clip, and our whole technician team as well. So without wasting any further time, let me go ahead and introduce the case. So we are going to show a tower in a nonagenarian scenario. Next slide. That's where we work. Next slide. That's our team. Next slide. So this is a 93-year-old lady. She's a freedom fighter. Uh, her husband was also actively involved in the Indian freedom movement. She's presently independent, does all her activities by herself, uh, participates in all social functions. She was, ed she was having class three to class four, di class two, three dyspnea for past four years, severe aortic stenosis, mild AR, EF of 50% in 2020. She was doing well with medicines, and then st she started having recurrent hospitalizations five times in the last one year. Uh, hypertension, CKD, anemia. Her body surface area is 1.14 meters square. Her last admission was in Feb 2023 with heart failure, and patient was not improving despite best medical ICU care. So we decided uh, the echo at that time showed peak gradient of 95, mean gradient of 61, EF of around 30-35%. Next slide. This was the EKG, normal sinus rhythm, some STD changes. Next slide. So the patient was not improving, and we were just debating what should we do for this patient. We did a balloon aortic valvuloplasty with an 18mm ZMED balloon, and you can see those gradients, more than 50% reduction. Patient did extremely well, got discharged from ICU after two days, and uh, was back to her normal life. And that's when we decided to do a transcatheter aortic valve replacement for her. Next one. So patient improved, was willing for TAVR, heart team meeting, and there's no doubt, 90 non agenda is always TAVR. TF TAVR, now plan was one proglide with provisional proglide and seal. Next slide. Now this is the CT scan. The uh, area derived diameter is 20. The area of the annulus is around 320 millimeters square. The est the left coronary height is 7 millimeter, the right coronary height is 12 millimeter. This left sinus of valsalva is around 24, the right sinus of valsalva is again around 22. Can we have the slides, please? And the non sinus of valsalva is 24. Next slide. And you can see uh, there's not much of calcium in the annulus, not much of calcium in LVOT, a tricuspid aortic valve. Next slide. Calcification in the STJ, ascending aorta, leaflets, extending all the way till the base of the leaflets. Next slide. Next slide. Oh, so th go back to the previous slide. And here you can see the length of the membrane septum. It is 8 millimeter. And this patient already has a narrow QRS complex. And the, uh, we measure membrane septum for all our patients. And it just helps us to kind of educate the patient as well. Now let's say the membrane septum is 2 mm. I'm just going to tell the patient that you are at a high chance of pacemaker. My depth would still be around uh, 3 to 4 mm. Next slide. Uh, femoral vessel size is good enough. All, both the sizes is more than 5 millimeter. Next slide. And this calcification, uh, you can see the calcium uh, postal in aorta and calcium in all in the descending thoracic as well as in the pelvic vessels. Next one. Femoral bifurcation, tortuous femoral vessels. Next one. So the summary of the CT scan, aortic annulus area is 320 millimeter square. LVOT area is 332 millimeter square. A 20 mm octocore at the level of annulus is minus 1.8%. At the level of LVOT is minus 5.4%. Now intermediate size octocore 21.5 at the level of annulus is 13.5%. At the level of LVOT is 9.4%. Now let's assess the risk of coronary occlusion in this patient. We're going to do a coronary alignment, commercial alignment. The left coronary height is 7 millimeter. The sinus of valsalva diameter, the left sinus of valsalva is 24. The right is 23, and the non is 24.6. For pacemaker, we have a good membrane septum height, which is 8.6 mm. 
as well as uh, narrow QRS uh, EKG. Next one. So this is how the valve is crimped in order to do a commercial alignment. This is a clock which is there on the crimping tool. The RCC is uh, crimped, and majority of time the valve, when it is deployed, is going to have a commercial alignment. Next one. Next one. Next one. This is our small experience of Jaipur. Next slide. We have analyzed our 200 cases, compared my valve, Evolute, and Sapien. Equivalent results in all three cases. Next one. So uh, next one. So the pacemaker rate is equal in all three valves. The 30-day mortality is similar in all three valves. In hospital mortality, also similar in all three valves. Next one. So our plan for this case, she's a 93-year-old 93 93 lady, a transfemoral tower, one proglide, conscious sedation, coronary protection, cerebral protection, coronary alignment. Now the debate is 20 mm versus a 21.5 mm octocore. So, uh, and then a coronary protection with a guide versus no coronary protection with the guide. So with that, you know, we're going to uh, show our case here. We have a six French, can we so see here? Six French artery on the left side, another six French artery on the left side. We have a vein with a temporary pacemaker in, and we're going to show an ultrasound guided femoral access, one proglide, and uh, this is where we are. Questions? Unfreeze. And here you can see the ultrasound. Can Mike? we have the ultrasound on the yeah. screen, please? Ravindra. Yeah. Can you hear me, Ravindra? Good morning, sir. How are you? I very can hear you very well. Can we have ultrasound on the screen, please? Very well. I presume that the coronary anatomy was OK. So for the uh, audience, the uh, octa-core is, of course, uh, domestic. Uh, design is just uh, two row of cell. Okay, uh, so we did an ultrasound guide here. Can we see down, please? With a minimal uh, shortening. Okay. So this is a micropuncture. Come out. So minimal shortening of uh, 19 to 21 Are percent. And uh, obviously, the uh, experience with the commercial alignment in this country is quite substantial. Uh, as a matter of fact, there is uh, a publication uh, submit, a paper submit about 35 days with uh, a multi slide CT scan pre and post. And, uh, it's, you know, with the complexity of the uh, case in India with a lot of uh, bicuspid valve, it's, uh, it's a very useful technique uh, that was uh, shortly alluded to uh, with the uh, outside the patient uh, taking, to, uh, taking into consideration the anatomy, uh, be able to uh, uh, align the uh, the commissioner, yeah. I'm, I'm very impressed by the uh, uh, Thank you, Professor Sarius, for highlighting uh, that. Patient is very well done. Huh? It's, uh, yeah. And also so we, uh, we have taken one proglide. We're going to deploy a one proglide on the right side. Looks like the frame height is 17 millimeters, from what I can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I have the mosquito, please? So we have switched to totally one, just one closure device, and we presented our uh, comparison of two proglide versus one proglide and provisional second device at London Valves as well. What we have seen is the minor vascular complication is more with one proglide like some oozing hematoma, but the major vascular complication rate, uh, vascular occlusion, requirement of a stent and requirement of a surgery uh, is not there with one proglide. So here's a nine French sheet. Can you hear the stiff wire? Okay. 
can also play the uh, angiogram. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what all we have done here. So, okay. So that's the aortogram, and you can see there's uh, significant aortic regurgitation as well because we did a BAV in this patient with an 18 mm balloon. Next one. This is the first one. So we did an arch uh, angiogram. And next one. <coughs> and because of heavy calcification, a nonagenarian, 93 year old, we decided to do a cerebral protection. Here's a sentinel device. Next one. The proximal being deployed. Next. And, and here's the distal one, which is deployed. And we just advance a pig tilt to make sure. Uh, it is not coming in the way. So the nine French sheath is removed, and now we'll go ahead and use a Python sheath, which is an expandable sheath. So uh, Dr. A.B. Mehta and Professor Sarius, the question which I wanted to discuss is 20 mm versus 21.5. We have decided to use a 20 mm valve uh, because Again, looking at the age of the body surface area is just 1.14, one number one, and number two, coronary protection versus no coronary protection with a guide and a stand. Uh, it's interesting that in Europe, I mean, a lot of uh, intermediate size are used, especially in the Netherlands, you know, they are big guys, so we use a, a lot of 30.5 uh, and 32 uh, millimeter valve, I mean, because, uh, uh, we need that, so it's, it's a major advantage. And the Python is a remarkable uh, sheet, you know, uh, 14, 14 French for all the valve, including the 32. So <laughs> that, that's making the, that's reaching the market very powerfully. How much force does it take to get the valve through there? Look at the valve. Sorry, does it take a lot of force to get the valve through there, or no? No, not, no. Uh, not specially, I mean, um, you know, the, this week we did, we did a few uh, aortic regurgitation, pure aortic regurgitation with the 32. So you, you compensate for the anchoring without the calcium. I mean, yeah. one case had uh, something like 148 uh, millimeter square of, uh, mm. of calcium. We compensate by the, the diameter of yeah. the valve. Yeah. I mean, that's the way to anchor it in... Uh, in uh, aortic, uh, pure aortic regurgitation. He also there's not so much calcium, mm. and there is a substantial uh, aortic regurgitation. So would you protect a left main a priori in this case? I would be very tempted just to put a guider and have it. I don't see the downside of it. Yeah, the point is that with the octa-core, you have only two rows. I understand. And uh, one row is completely open, and the other is uh, with the uh, external and internal uh, skirt. So the access to the coronary artery is also quite, uh, quite good, yeah? The only, no, I agree, the only challenge which you see in protecting the coronary with a guide is so much of calcium in the STJ and uh, as well as the left main. Uh, if this was, uh, if we were using a 21.5, we would have 100% protected the coronaries. But as of now, we are planning to use a 20 mm valve. Okay. And the sinus of Valsalva left side is 24. Uh, we have decided to have our guide ready, a wire ready, and not put the guide, engage the guide up front in this very crimp, uh, cramped anatomy. You see the STJ, the whole ascending aorta, yeah. mm -hmm. it's heavily calcified. So here's our pigtail. Okay, let's have our pressures, please. Okay. Let's have our uh, Safari Extra small wire. I mean, the, the fact that they have changed for the octa core from. Uh, uh, hexagon and uh, octagon is, is quite amazing. I mean, and this technique of the interlace struts 
uh, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, it's really uh, uh, very ingenious from the uh, people in, uh, in India to have created very quickly something which was never done before. Yeah? I, I predict that it will be That's a very a successful uh, device worldwide. Yeah. <coughs> Logically sure. The other thing I don't know, we want to share with the, all the audiences, uh, what we do is we would be wearing two gloves uh, before, uh, the, do, before the procedure, and when we take the valve, uh, we would uh, take our out, outer gloves. And that is because if you look at the explant tavi uh, study, one of the important indications for patients who are undergoing surgery after TAVI procedure was infective endocarditis. I don't know how much this, this will help, but this is what we practice at a center. Just before the valve, change the gloves and something like how a surgeon would practice. So this what, is the octocor. What uh, antibiotics you do you down? give for prophylaxis? So, Majority of our cases just get ceftriaxone. So you can, you can see the sheath tip and the wire both in the same mm -hmm. uh, view, and this has the octocor valve which comes. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the LAO, please. Okay, just flex a little bit so that we make sure it's not uh, interacting with the cerebral protection central device. Show me up. Okay. So for the operator going from the my valve to these uh, octa core, it's much more simple in terms of markers. I mean, uh, and basically you the, are targeting for the, uh, 80, 20, angle. even 85, 15. Uh, I'll see what the operator is doing in this case. It really tracks up nicely, doesn't it? So push yeah. your wire. Beautiful. Let's just keep it there. Okay, that's good. You see it. So, I, yes, P Professor has already highlighted how to position this valve. But the uh, good thing in this valve is there's not much significant foreshortening which you will appreciate fluoroscopically. So, yeah. you can see those uh, marker. You can see a, a wide marker there. That's what we would like to place at the level of annulus. Okay, let's have an angiogram, please. Inject. Yeah. The other thing is before you deploy, you make sure uh, these are standard steps. Make sure it's not on the inner curve, it's more in the center or on the outer curve. And if it is required, uh, you might go a little uh, push pull thing. But I think this looks like a good position for us. Okay, so let's go ahead. Base at 180. So the initial positioning is very simple. I mean, uh, you know. The, 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 the yeah, question is, uh, the uh, operator in this country knows very well how to do the push-pull a bit. Stop pacing, fluorosave. Now's the moment of truth. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and take a picture. I'm just more concerned about the coronary. Uh, let's have a picture. And you can see the depth uh, with the jail pigtail. Okay, let's go ahead, wait a minute. Show me, show me the pigtail up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ready for injection? Inject. Good. So coronary is flowing. Okay. Let's let's remove this thing. So sometimes you know protecting the coronary looks easy, but you know in these calcified lesions we have had problems in the past where we protected the coronary. At the end of the day, there was a dissection in the middle AD, proximal AD, just by uh, placing the stents in these calcified blockages. So I think if the Okay, let's go ahead. But you you could see you have the let's, upper let's cell, which is quite open. Yeah. So the access to the yes. main stem is quite easy. You can see the tree let's post. Let's put a picture. The tree post, uh, you could see on the, on the metal, uh, it's, yeah. it's quite far away from the main stem. You, yeah. And, and I would like to also draw your attention to the EKG, still same, narrow QRS. And then we'll discuss the foreshortening also when they started with the valve deployment. Apparently to the eyes, it just ends where you want it to end. Okay, let's have this. Yeah. No, it looks very nice. Um, so you can see it. the native leaflet and the cusp was pushed up as well. So yeah. still would be nice to see the ostium of the left main, make sure. It let's have one uh, picture. Okay, let's go LAO cranial. So in the, the lower row of cell, you have the external and the internal skirt. Mm -hmm. 
But the upper row is completely free, of course. More, more, Elio. Uh, you, you could see. Yeah, good. You Looks you like see a, a slightly bit the interlace, uh, good. interlace truss of the uh, octagon. By the way, it looks, seems like an ideal valve. Of so, you know, we'll take a. Right? Yeah. Absolutely so no great. We'll take a picture here. And, you know, another. Another picture, another point for the audience is, you know, when you want to make sure that the left main is free or away from the valve frame, go to the LAO cranial yeah. and then take a picture. So this is the LAO cranial, remove parallax in the valve, and let's go ahead and inject, please. Looks good. Looks very so good. left main is Even nicely flowing. Uh, you can see the lead. the valve, yeah. I mean, uh, zero regurgitation, good access to the... We, we, uh, the main stem. And then we're going to remove this thing and we'll take one I more picture just to see. can be very, very can proud have. to have created that technology, you know, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. Very impressive. Very just impressive. One, one thing which I want to share, one thing which I want to share, Professor Sarius, because everybody is there. We did the first in man case six years ago. That patient is still there with single digit gradients. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead, inject. I so we see no change in ECG, no paravalvular leak, and good story. coronary I mean, access. Uh, whatever I have seen, and, and this week, I mean, we, we did the case in Mumbai, in, the, in Wapi, and so, I mean, all the cases were spectacular, aortic regurgitation, and so, 32, I mean, uh, every time it's end up with yeah. perfect results, so I... Uh, and you, you have seen the speed of so we, the we have some time. We're going to go ahead and close the groin as well. One positioning the marker at the bottom of the pigtail. That's it. No manipulation. We've, if, if you look at the, the skill of the previous case, where you Show have me to about? do the pacing and the multiple injection, and this, this is about? simple. Less than this 10 is minutes. Less yeah. than yeah. 10 minutes. Go ahead, remove yeah. this. I was watching the time. It was literally less than Absolutely. 10 minutes. Absolutely. We need this technology but in the it, US. It is a Thank you. We wanted, we wanted to have huh? some time for discussion. A wonderful team. They made, yeah. the made it look easy. You know, we still have 12 minutes <laughs> and 38 seconds. Maybe you can do another one. <laughs> so, uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna the groin closure, and we'll uh, remove the sentinel as well, and we'll have some discussion. Let, let's put uh, uh, Rash Makar mm -hmm. on the yeah. spot, and go to the microphone and give your impression about this case. Yeah. Micro microphone on, please. Microphone please on. Take care of the microphone because we want to hear what he's going to say. Otherwise, you come here. Come here. Good morning, Raj. Good, good morning, uh, Ravinder. Uh, congratulations. I think you did this case beautifully, uh, very in a very slick fashion. And I also looked at the results of your center, and I think they are as good as any. Uh, uh, excellent center, actually, you know, anywhere in the world. So I have to say congratulations Thank you so much. Thank you. on Thank building you. a great program. And I think uh, I, I was just talking to my associates as you were, uh, you know, we, we, we use a lot of balloon expandable valve. And so, you know, balloon expandable valves we find are simpler compared to a lot of times, you know, using the self-expanding valves. But I have to say I was very impressed uh, by the fact that you didn't have to assemble the valve, it's already pre-assembled, it was easy for you to track it, uh, and I think the deployment was very precise. So I think as, that's you, know, as you mentioned, there was no foreshortening. I that's think that's the exactly what we actually saw. So I think uh, I, I have to agree that I'm actually quite impressed uh, you know, by this technology, so I think it's terrific. So that's a very important statement coming from a great expert. And uh, you know, uh, all the data on bike to speed valve is coming from Ashmakar. And uh, in this country, you can have up to 30% of, uh, of a bike to speed valve. I saw a case of a single leaflet at the age of 42. I was really uh, nervous about the case. The result was impeccable. Single, single leaflet at the age of 42 safe. with a huge aorta. Yeah, I, I, I think it's important to collect some durability data, right? So I think these pa there are lots of patients that were done. Ravinder talked about the first patient done six years ago. So I think that will give comfort and confidence. 
because we know about the durability of Evolute and we know about the durability of Sapien valves. So I think it is critical to accumulate data about the durability of this valve. And I think that is what will make a difference in adoption worldwide, you know what I'm saying? So I think um, that would be helpful. I agree. That's so that's the important uh, question. I think that's how, because as we are moving to the young age, we need to have the durability data uh, on these TAVI valves. So we remove the Sentinel device, which you could see, and uh, Sentinel, it's not an all comers use for us. We would use it only in patients who are high risk for development of a stroke. We use just one proglide. It'll show a DSA of the uh, groin picture. Ready? DSA, please. Inject. Some oozing there, we're gonna hold some pressure. And the reason is, you know, just one proglide, if there's a lot of pinching, we would avoid a second device, we'd just hold manual pressure for five, 10 minutes. Uh, but if there is no uh, uh, stenosis, and if there's a pulse style flow, we would go ahead and use a second device as an ad hoc. So uh, this is where we are now. Well, congratulations. Four more minutes to go. Congratulations, really expertly uh, done demonstration. Yeah, I mean, super, superb, superb work, uh, good uh, technology, and uh, very impressive case. We are in uh, two thirds of our trial called Landmark, which is uh, the My Valve versus the Medtronic family and the Edwards family. I think we will be finished in December and may be able to present that. Uh, early in 2024. Uh, and we hope to have at the, at the end of the trial, we hope to have the octa-core uh, in the trial, because in this uh, protocol, you are allowed to move with the family Edwards, the family Medtronic, and also the nice. family uh, uh, MyValve. And um, it, it's really uh, in Europe, the, uh, the person who has the larger experience is uh, Ignacio Amat. Um, I think it's, it's really doing well. Oh, yeah, Rush. Give the microphone again, yeah. So on. Yeah, Ravinder, I wanted to ask you a so question. On, we would like to, we are, yes. The, the fact that yes. these are, there's just two rows and these are actually large cells, do you see it behave differently? You know, uh, you know in very heavily calcified valves, one would make the argument that the, you know, having smaller cells at the bottom, you know, would that actually give you more radial strength, less radial, you know what, so is there any observational, yeah. observations that you have made or is there any data on that? You know, comparing this octocore versus I could not the previous see, uh, generation, my valve. Uh, no, so, you know, so have I used a lot of octocores and heavily calcified valves? Not yet, we are just gaining our experience. But what all valves we have done, uh, regarding the radial strength, the expansion, it is almost similar. The only advantage is uh, the deployment is more predictable compared to the first generation valve. So as you saw in this case, it's just you have to train your eyes that to begin, when you start deployment, you feel it is very shallow, it might just pop out. Uh, but it's just, as you saw, it just remains uh, where it is. So to answer your question, I think uh, I haven't seen any difference, but I think we have to wait for more and more cases to do. From, from an engineering point of view, the fact that you yes. merge two octacon together with these interlaced uh, trucks make the columnar strength quite good. I mean, I don't remember exactly the value uh, from an engineering point of view, but in, in Newton per uh, millimeter, it's very strong. So okay. technically speaking, uh, there is more strength and radial force. I don't know if it's going to be translated in a clinical case, but I mean, the large majority that I have seen so far is direct implantation, no pre in very calcified valves. So I think it's okay. What do you think? I mean, yes, I mean, it's, it's, so it's, it's, we haven't seen any, so the, the way to, I would like to answer this way, we haven't seen any valve which, you know, recoils 
once we have deployed the valve. I think that the Even other in the day calcified anatomy. reviewing the, um, the 125 case, mm -hmm. I saw only 9% of post dilatation. And it's basically uh, not because anything like uh, recoil and so, just to uh, uh, increase a little bit the diameter of the valve because there was a small degree of uh, regurgitation. No, I think it's, uh, it's quite impressive, yeah. Okay, any so questions so from the audience? Before you sign off, thank you I very much for uh, my team. Ravindra. Your, your domestic technology, so you should yes, ask sir. question about your domestic technology. Patrick, I want to ask an off-bit question. Ravindra, did your patient participate in 1940 to quit India movement or not? <laughs> she did, her husband. You That's said that, she you said that she's a she's freedom so fighter and she's 93. Yes, so she It would is. be interesting to have first an yes. experience from what she has to say. We chatted, you know, I don't know, I'll record a video and if you're interested, we'll share with her. She is mentally so sound. Her, her every word she speaks is so clear. And uh, she does not allow anybody to touch her when she's getting out of her bed and she's walking and going to the toilet, except for that one month of hospitalization where she was really sick. I know, I think it's a beautifully done, yeah. uh, Ravindra. Uh, extraordinary uh, Thank you, skill. Sir. Lovely. You know, what I really appreciate is uh, the way you approach the patient because that individual went five times in the coronary care unit of the ICU because of heart failure. Then they did a, a balloon valvuloplasty as a bridge. So the improvement, and finally at the age of 93, decide to put a valve. That's perfect clinical approach. Yes. On top of a good technology, and yeah. on top of a, a perfect team, working together. So it's a perfect example of what should be done in the field of Taver. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think we can get an early start with the next case then, huh?